I seek refuge in Allah. I seek refuge in Allah. The all hearing, all knowing from Satan, from Satan. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله There is a book which is dedicated upon the benefits and the greatness of reciting durood upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And within that book there is a hadith mentioned and it is a very beautiful and faith refreshing hadith which also supports a lot of our beliefs as well. And what is that hadith? That hadith says that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that nobody sends salam upon me. Nobody sends salutation upon me except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returns my soul in my body and I reply to the salam of that individual. Subhanallah, such a magnificent blessing that when a person recites durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa replies to that individual's salam. And the point of our belief that there are people who say that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has left this world and he ma'azallah has no conscience or he does not know what is going on. He's not alive in his grave. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself is saying that when a person recites salam upon me, my soul is returned in my body and I reply to his salam. Subhanallah azza wa jal. So we should not have this corrupt bad belief that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not linked to us anymore. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is alive in his grave and he still has all the ikhtiarats, those qualities and attributes which he had in this world as well. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Welcome back to the program, The Deadly Sins, in which we talk about those sins which cause the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which cause a person to be distanced from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those sins which take a person away from the path of paradise and puts them on the path towards the fire of hell. And ultimately those sins which can cause a person to lose his Iman. Now the topic of today is a very sensitive topic. It is a topic, like we mentioned in our introduction, that sins which cause a person to be taken away distance from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is one of those sins. Every other sin does so, but this sin in particular. And this is the sin of disrespecting and speaking bad about the Sahaba Ikram. Speaking bad about the companions radiallahu anhum after their demise. And this is what we will look at today. We will talk about the greatness of the companions. We will talk about the esteemed honor and high status and level Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted the companions and the punishment and the problems and trials a person can face who speaks ill of these companions. And what can we be, say, what can we be said about the companions? That just the person who was blessed with the company, with the vision of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a state of Iman. It has been stated about the companions and the high level and the piety of the companions that Sayyidina Abu Jahan bin Huzaifa radiallahu anhu has narrated that in the battle of Yarmouk, I went out looking for my cousin. He says, I went out looking for my cousin when I seen him and he was in a state of distress and he was asking for water to be given to him. He was very thirsty. So I grabbed water and I went close to that cousin of mine. I went close to that companion of mine. And when I went to him, he heard the sound of another companion who was also thirsty. So he said to me, take this water and take it to them, take it to my brother, give it to my brother instead of me. And I took it to him. And when I went to that companion, he heard the sound of another brother, another companion who was also thirsty, who was also in need of water. So he said, take it to him. And like this, I took it to him. And when I reached the third one, my cousin, he passed away. 
And then the older companion passed away. And by this stage, the third companion had passed away as well. This was the level of love. This was the level of sincerity. This is the level of selflessness that they had, that a companion would honor and privilege his brother, his companion over himself. And this is the group of people that we are talking about. This is the group of individuals that we are talking about, that their level of piety is something which cannot be matched. Their level of zuhad, their level of fearness, their level of love is something that which cannot be comprehended. Just as the Messenger of Allah, our Prophet, our Beloved, is the best of the Prophets, similarly the companions of the Prophet are the best of companions as well. Now what is the definition of a Sahabi? What is the definition of a companion? It has been stated by Sina Allama Hafiz, Ibn Hajar Asqalani rahimahullah, he has stated that that fortunate individual or those fortunate people who seen the Prophet Sallallahu in the state of Iman and then also passed away in the state of Iman who were given the company of the Prophet Sallallahu in the state of faith whilst they were Muslims and they passed away upon this state they are the companions, they are the Sahaba Ikram radiallahu anhum. And the number of companions, the number of Sahaba Ikram radiallahu anhum is enormous. It exceeds a hundred thousand. It has been stated on the occasion of Hajjatul Bida when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was delivering a sermon and it is a very historical sermon. It has said that there were approximately 114,000 companions present there. And in another narration, it is said that there were more than 124,000 companions present on that place. And from those, we do not know the name of every single companion, but we do have recognition and we do know the name of over 7,000 companions. And this is the level of the following of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that at times over a hundred thousand people, a hundred thousand companions, those people who Allah has promised paradise with, those people who are the best of companions, those people who are in the company of the best of creation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are the companions. They are the ones we love. They are the ones we learn from. And they are the ones we should never disrespect of or dispeak in any way, shape or form. This is a problem which is found today that people, they indulge themselves in the internal affairs of the companions. Remember, it is haram. It is forbidden. It is prohibited for a person to indulge in the internal affairs of the companions radiallahu anhum. And we are not allowed to speak about the internal affairs of the companions. We are not able to point at a companion and say what he did was wrong. What he did was not right. He should not have done this. Who are we? Who has given us the authority? Which commandment has came from Allah or the Prophet which tells us to indulge in this? Remember, we have been told to hold our tongues in the matters of the companion. Talking about the internal affairs of the companion is like playing with fire. And whoever plays with fire eventually burns himself. And there are people who put accusations upon the companions. And what is a Muslim's fundamental source of gaining knowledge? What is the most powerful and authentic source of knowledge? It is undoubtedly the glorious Quran. So let's look at the glorious Quran. Let's see what the Quran has to say about the blessed companions and how Allah has treated them and in which state they are in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anfal, verse 4, translation from Kanzul Iman, these are the true Muslims, for them are ranks before their Lord, and forgiveness and an honorable sustenance. Similarly, in Surah Al-Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, distinguishes, He separates the companions into the Muhajireen and the Ansar, those who migrated and those who are already present, and those who followed these Muhajireen and Ansar in goodness, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, translation from Kanzul Iman, Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. And He has kept ready for them gardens beneath which rivers flow to abide in it forever and ever. 
This is the great success. Subhanallah, Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the glorious Quran about the companions, those who migrated and those who are already present there. And then those companions who followed them in goodness, meaning this is conclusive of all the companions radiallahu anhum. And what does Allah say? Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has prepared gardens for them under which rivers flow and they will reside in it forever and ever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made that judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear upon the people that the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sahaba ikram, they have been forgiven, they have been entered paradise and they will reside in there forever and ever. Now if an illiterate, ignorant, foolish person gets up and he says, no, but this is different for this companion. This is not for this companion. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided for all the companions, who are you to make such a statement? Who are you to make such a comment? And we should refrain ourselves from speaking ill of the companions. Sayyidina Farooq Azam radiallahu anhu narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Akrimu ashabi fa innahum khayrukum. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, respect my companions, respect my sahaba, respect those people who are around me. They are the most virtuous people from among you. Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that the best people from my ummah are the blessed companions radiallahu anhum. Then those after them, meaning the tabi'een, and then those after them, the taba tabi'een. So this is the the, the status of the companions that they have been called the best people within my nation. The best people in my nation are the companions radiallahu anhum. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam companions were very blessed and they were very honored as well as the, the ranks of the companions radiallahu anhum has also been mentioned that the greatest companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most closest, the most beloved companion to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, the first Caliph, the first Khalifa of Islam, Amirul Mu'mineen Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Then after the second Caliph of Islam, Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu anhu. Then the third Caliph of Islam, Sayyidina Uthman Ghani radiallahu anhu. And then the fourth Caliph of Islam, the Lion of Allah, Sayyidina Ali Karram Allahu Ta'ala Wajhahu al -Kareem. This is the order which the ijma, the consensus of the Sahaba and the ulama is on, that the rightly guided, guided caliphs are these four. And then it goes on to the Ashratul Mubashara, and then the companions of the Battle of Badr, and so on and so forth. So the companions, even though they are the most beloved and the closest to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even there, they have ranks in between them. And we must respect and honor every single companion that we hear, because just the fact that they were honored with the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember, a tree which would come in contact, which would come in, which would come in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be granted paradise, would be granted a place in paradise than those companions who were willing to sacrifice their lives and they did sacrifice their lives on the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They sacrificed their life on the honor of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, on protecting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, on protecting the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They are those people who in this nation, there is nobody like them. They are on matches, they, are, they have no uh, similar to them in this nation. It has been stated by Sayyidina Uwaym bin Sa'id radiallahu anhu that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated, undoubtedly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen me and he azza wa jal has chosen my companions for me. Subhanallah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that that Lord, that Allah who has chosen me is the same Lord who has chosen my companions. He azza wa jal has made some of them my deputies, my helpers and my relatives فَمَنْ سَبَّهُمْ فَعَلَيْهِ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ Thus, anyone who curses them, 
has the curse of Allah on him, has the curse of the angels on him, and has the curse of all the people on him. لا يقبل الله منه يوم القيامة صرفا ولا عدلا. And Allah subhanahu wa taala will not accept any of his obligatory actions. nor his nafil actions. Meaning, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us that it is Allah who has chosen me and it is Allah who has chosen my companions for me. So anybody who speaks ill of them, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala curses that individual. Angels curse that individual. The whole nation, people curse that individual. And his ibadat, his worship will not be accepted, neither his fard, nor his nafil. So those people who have a religious appearance, they claim to be very pious, they claim to be very knowledgeable. If they speak ill of the companions, then remember, they are the cursed people. They are those people who Allah Ta'ala will not accept any of their worship. So we should be very careful in relation to this. In other blessed hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whoever speaks ill of my companion has gone astray from my path and his abode is the fire of hell. His place is the fire of hell and worst indeed that is his destination. Meaning a person who speaks ill of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then his place, he should make his place the fire of hell. Then the things that he should look forward to is the punishment of the fire of hell. So my dear viewers of Mandi Channel, when it comes to talking about the companions radiallahu anhum, then we should be very careful about what we say. We should be very controlling of our tongue and we should not Uh, listen to those people who speak ill regarding the companions. Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu was going somewhere and he passed by a person who was speaking ill of Sayyidina Ali, Sayyidina Zubair and Sayyidina Talha radiallahu anhum. And he said to that individual, refrain from speaking ill of these people that Allah's curse might be upon you. And that person mocked Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu. And this angered Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu that this individual is speaking ill of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So Sayyidina Sa'ad entered the masjid, he performed wudu, he prayed two rakat nafil, then he raised his hands in the court of Allah Ta'ala. And he said, Oh Allah, if he has displeased you by speaking ill of the glorious companions of your beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam, punish him today. Punish him today and make him a sign for those who will take a warning from him. And Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu was in this state, he was in the state of dua, he had not finished his dua when news came to him that a camel charged that individual, bit that individual and crushed that individual. Meaning the dua of Sayyidina Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu had not yet completed, he had not finished from his dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted and punished that individual who spoke ill of the companions. So this should be a warning for us, this should be a red flag for us, this should be a, a wake up call for us that we should never speak bad of any companions. And nowadays there are people who are very brave and they're very courageous and they speak ill of Sayyidina Mu'awiyah radiallahu anhu. That individual who was Katib al-Wahi, he used to write the revelation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He is the brother-in-law of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa His father is a companion and about which it is said that he is a mujtahid. He has, he has the ability to do ijtihad and his level of knowledge is proven from Sahih al-Bukhari. That book which is considered the most authentic book after the glorious Quran, it is mentioned in this that he is a knowledgeable person. He is a mujtahid, so a companion of such high caliber, a companion with so much honor, a companion with such rich history behind him. People speak bad about that companion. And remember a person who speaks ill of a companion, then he should surely be punished in this world and also in the hereafter. Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated, whoever has devotion towards my blessed companions, whoever has devotion towards my azwaj, my blessed wives, and whoever has devotion towards my ahlul bayt, my family radiallahu anhum, and does not criticize any of them and departs from this world with their love, he will be with me on the day of judgment under my rank. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned this 
Why? Because he knew there will be people who will speak ill of his companions. He knows there are people who will speak ill of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. And he knew there will be people who spoke ill of his family. So to encourage people not to do this, he said, whoever does not criticize them and whoever loves them will be with me on the day of judgment. And you know the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever spoke well of my blessed companions has sought deliverance from hypocrisy, meaning that person is free from hypocrisy. And what is the opposite of this? Whoever speaks ill of a companion, whoever speaks bad of a companion, then he has found himself to be included within the hypocrites. Then he has found hypocrisy within himself. He has found the signs of a munafiq within himself. So the dear viewers of Madni channel, what do we know? We know that speaking ill of a companion radiallahu anhum is a kabira guna, is a major sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised paradise with all of them. Har sahabiye nabi jannati jannati that every single companion of the Prophet sallallahu is the dweller of paradise, is within paradise. And this is a belief which is proven from the Quran and the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu So do not let anybody tell you any different. And if anybody does come to you, you should close your ears and not even listen to that cursed individual. His ibadat, his worship is not accepted. And there is fear that he might lose his iman due to this disrespect. May Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are always respectful. May Allah make us of those who have the extreme love of the companions in our heart and keep us a million, billion, trillion miles away from that individual who speaks ill of the companion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us sincere in our love for the Prophet and his companion and make us of those who honor and safeguard the name of the companions. Ameen bijahi nabi al Amin wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu I seek refuge in Allah. I seek refuge in Allah. The all hearing, all knowing from Satan.